Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by a gene pool and allele frequency. You should then be able to use the Hardy-Weinberg principle to calculate the frequency of alleles in a population. So far on this topic, we've looked at a range of different ideas in genetics. We've looked at how genes can exist in different versions, which are called alleles, and we've looked at how alleles can be inherited. In this video and the next few videos, we're going to be looking at genes and alleles in a population, and scientists call this population genetics. So what is a population? Well, a population is a group of organisms of the same species occupying a particular space at a particular time that can potentially interbreed. And you need to learn that definition. I'm showing you here a female mountain gorilla and her baby. And there are around 1,000 mountain gorillas in Africa, split between two populations. Now, if we take any population of organisms and consider all the genes and all the alleles present at a particular time, then scientists call this the gene pool. And if we consider one allele, then the relative frequency of that allele in a population is called the allele frequency. And we'll be taking a closer look at allele frequency in this video. OK, I want to start by recapping genes, alleles and chromosomes. Remember that we find genes on chromosomes. And human cells contain two copies of each chromosome. So that means that we have two copies of each gene. In this example, we're looking at a gene which I'll call gene A. Gene A has two alleles, a dominant allele and a recessive allele. So there are three possible genotypes for gene A, and I'm showing you those here. We have homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive. Now, because we have two copies of every gene, that means that we also have two alleles for every gene. So some humans will have two dominant alleles, some humans will have one dominant allele and one recessive allele, and some humans will have two recessive alleles. But no matter which alleles a person has for gene A, they will have two alleles. OK, now imagine that we have a population of humans, and I'm showing you the genotype of each person underneath. In this population, every single human has the genotype capital A, capital A. If we were to pick one of these humans at random, the probability of that person having the genotype capital A, capital A would be 1.0. And that's because every single person in this population has that genotype. However, in this population, the probability of a person having the genotype lowercase a, lowercase a is zero. And that's because nobody in this population has that genotype. So in this population, the allele frequency of the capital A allele is 100%. And that's because every allele is the capital A allele the allele frequency of the lowercase allele is 0%. And that's because none of the alleles are the lowercase a allele. OK, here's a different population. And again, I'm showing you the genotype of each individual. In this case, every individual is heterozygous for the A gene. In other words, they all have one dominant allele and one recessive allele. If we picked a random person, the probability that they have the capital A, lowercase a genotype is 1.0. And that's because everyone in this population has that genotype. So in this population, the allele frequency of the capital A allele is 50%. And the allele frequency of the lowercase allele is also 50%. So as you can see, the allele frequency for any allele can be different depending on the population that we're looking at. So how do we calculate the frequency of alleles for a gene? Well, to do that, we use the Hardy-Weinberg principle. This sounds tricky, but it's actually quite straightforward once you get the hang of it. The Hardy-Weinberg principle states that in a population, the proportion of dominant and recessive alleles will not change from generation to generation. Now, this depends on five conditions being met, and you need to learn these. Number one, no mutations take place. Number two, the population is isolated from other populations, so no alleles can pass in or out. Number three, no selection takes place, so all alleles have the same chance of being passed to the next generation. Number four, 
the population has a large number of individuals. And number five, individuals mate randomly within the population. Now in reality, it's unlikely that these conditions are ever fully met, but the Hardy-Weinberg principle is still very useful. So let's see how to apply it. We're going to use the example that we saw before. We have a gene with two alleles. The dominant allele has the symbol capital A and the recessive allele has the symbol lowercase a. The frequency of the dominant allele will be shown by the letter P and the frequency of the recessive allele will be shown by the letter Q. Now we're looking at two alleles, so the first key idea you need to understand is that the frequency of the two alleles must add up to 100%. Another way of saying that is P plus Q equals 1 and it's critical that you learn that equation. Now in our population we have four possible combinations of these two alleles and I'm showing you those here. Underneath I'm showing you the frequency of each allele as P or Q. The frequency of these four combinations added together must also equal 100%. And another way of saying that is P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. And again, you need to learn that equation. So let's look at using these equations to answer a question. In a species of bird, beak shape is determined by a gene with two alleles. Straight beak is caused by dominant allele capital A and curved beak is caused by recessive allele lowercase a. In a population of 400 birds, 120 had a curved beak. Calculate the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype, homozygous dominant genotype and heterozygous genotype. Now before we start answering this question, there is a point that we need to consider. From the phenotype, we cannot know which birds are homozygous dominant and which are heterozygous. And that's because both the homozygous dominant and heterozygous genotypes would produce a straight beak. So the first thing we need to do is look at the homozygous recessive phenotype and that will be the case for any Hardy-Weinberg question. We know that 120 birds out of 400 have the homozygous recessive phenotype, in other words a curved beak. And remember that the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype, in other words lowercase a, lowercase a, is shown as q squared. So q squared is 120 divided by 400, which gives us a value of 0 0.30. So the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype is 0.30. We can now use this value to calculate the frequency of the lowercase a allele, in other words q. To calculate q, we need to take the square root of 0.30. This gives us a value of 0.55 for the frequency of the lowercase a allele. Now going back to our equations, we know that p plus q equals 1. So we can now calculate P, which is the frequency of the uppercase A allele. P equals 1 minus 0.55, which gives us a value of 0.45. So now we know the frequencies of the two alleles. We can now use these to calculate the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype and the heterozygous genotype. And as I said before, this is important because we cannot determine these directly from the phenotype. The frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype is p squared. p equals 0 0.45. 0 0.45 squared gives us a value of 0 0.20 for the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype. So out of 400 birds, 80 will have this genotype. The frequency of the heterozygous genotype is 2pq. 2 multiplied by 0 0.45 multiplied by 0 0.55 gives us a value of 0.50 for the heterozygous genotype. So out of 400 birds, 200 will have this genotype. So now we know the frequencies of the homozygous dominant, heterozygous and homozygous recessive genotypes. And if we add up these frequencies, we can see that they come to 1, in other words 100% of the population. In the next video, we'll start looking at the factors that can affect allele frequency. Thank you.